a woman who loved the church, yet was not afraid to speak her truth in the name of God. She lived with a true inner freedom. Even when challenged by the people she loved, she never wavered from her vision. Knowing the great gift of God's love in her life, she assured her followers that the greatness and strength consist in them that they have free and open access to God. Mary Ward was born in Yorkshire in 1585 during the reign of Elizabeth I in an age of religious intolerance when Catholics were being persecuted for the faith. Priests were hunted and ordinary Catholics lived in secrecy. Despite the persecution, Mary Ward's parents, Ursula and Marmaduke, remained faithful Catholics. Mary spent much of her childhood moving around and living with relatives as her parents tried to avoid fines and imprisonment. In those days, Catholic families stuck together. As Mary grew up, her parents hoped she would marry into another prominent Catholic family. There were plenty of suitors, but she wasn't interested. She wanted to be a nun. Her parents tried more matchmaking, and even a spiritual director told her, it is better to marry than to enter religious life. So Mary prayed and prayed and prayed to know if religious life was the right thing, God would make it happen. Eventually, her parents and her spiritual director agreed and she could enter a convent. There were no convents in England at that time, so Mary sailed in disguise to St. Omer. There she was welcomed by a Jesuit priest who told her that the poor Clare nuns were expecting her. Now this wasn't quite true, as the nuns said there was no room in their monastery. Instead, Mary could become an extern sister, which meant walking around the countryside begging for food and money to support the monastery. Mary quickly realized that the life of an extern sister was not for her. She left that convent and with the help of some influential friends, founded a monastery for English poor Clares. Finally, she could embrace the contemplative life that she always wanted. But this didn't seem to be God's plan either. Mary came to believe that God was calling her to some other thing. She didn't know what yet. So Mary went back to London where she worked in the Catholic underground network, sometimes disguising herself as a servant so she could pass on unnoticed amidst the spies and informers. Gradually, she gathered like-minded young women around her. So, then when she set off again for continent, she had a little band of companions with her. They settled in St. Omer, and they opened the first of many schools for local girls. Not for the first time, Mary found herself persuaded and advised by many different people about what she should do next. Some of them wrote plans setting out a way of life for Mary and her companions, but none of the plans seemed right. What Mary wanted was freedom for mission, and the plans tied her too much. The turning point came in 1611. While praying, Mary heard God tell her to take the same of the society. That meant that she could adopt the same way of the Jesuits in so far as it was possible for the women. The companion set about doing just that. And in 1620, Mary felt that the time was right to present a new vision to the Pope. Mary and her troop set off on a dangerous journey right through the middle of 30 years of war over the Alps on foot. Here, the Pope received Mary kindly but didn't approve her plan. Mary's vision for women was shocking and dangerous. Years passed with no answer. Mary opened new schools in Rome, Naples and Prussia. But even showing the Pope good works of their school made no difference. So Mary set off north again. She already had schools in St. Omer, 
Liège, Cologne, Trier, Rome and Naples. Now, with the help of the powerful European rulers, she opened new schools in Munich, Vienna and Monday Bratislava. However, the Pope and the Cardinals were adamant. One by one, they closed down her schools and dispersed her community. Mary could not believe that the Pope, who had been so kind to her, had ordered this to happen. In the confusion that followed, Mary was imprisoned in Munich and the second in command, Renfer Wickwar, was imprisoned in Leech. During her imprisonment, Mary wrote letters with invisible ink made from lemon juice to communicate with her sisters. Mary was eventually recognized and the Pope said that she was not a heretic, but the papal bull banning her community was still enforced. Many of the remaining sisters headed to Rome to be with Mary Watt. Pope Urban VIII continued to allow them to live together, but they were not allowed to run the school. Mary's health grew worse, and she was constantly watched by the agents of the Inquisition. In 1637, she asked permission to travel to Flanders to seek medical treatment. Eventually, the Pope agreed. By the time Mary set off, her plans changed and she heads off to England despite her failing health. She was hatching plans to set up a school in London, right under the nose of the English authorities. Mary Ward and her companions made the crossing to England in May 1639 and set up house in London. But the clouds of the English Civil War were gathering and in 1642, Mary and her companions moved it north to York. 33 years after she had left, Mary Ward was finally going home. They settled 40 miles above York, serving the local people in whatever way they could. A few years later, they moved closer to York itself, just as the warring army closing to the city. Mary's health grew worse. Mary died on 30th of January 1645. Her friends gathered around her. Although her life's work could have been destroyed, Mary remained cheerful, trusting in God. Her last words to her companions were, Cherish God's vocation in you. Let it be constant, efficacious and loving. And that is what her companions did. They stayed faithful to Mary's vision and small communities and schools survived. Over time, her institute grew and flourished. Mary Ward stands as the beacon of hope for our world. Today, there are over 2,000 Mary Ward sisters all around the world, still living out her belief that women in time to come will do much.